When you find the perfect recipe, you treasure it. The balance of all the ingredients leaves nothing wasted and nothing wanting. When you need to make more cookies than the recipe provides, you can just double the batch. Or if you need less, you cut it in half. A little math makes it have endless possibilities. A balanced equation is like a perfect recipe. It provides the same kind of quantitative information that a recipe does. Let's think of it in another way. To build a tricycle, we need a frame, a seat, wheels, pedals, and a handlebar. And perfect. We could treat this like a formula and give these symbols. And our built tricycle has a formula of FSW3P2H. It's probably easier just to say tricycle. With this information, we can create some conversion factors to help us solve logistical problems. For example, we know that if it takes three wheels to make one tricycle, we can write this conversion factor in two ways, depending on what we need. So if we have 96 wheels, we can do a little dimensional analysis and find that we can make 32 tricycles. Let's try another one. How many pedals do we need if we have 27 wheels? The conversion factor between wheels and pedals is three wheels to two pedals, which can be written two ways. Since we have 27 wheels, we'll use the one with wheels on the bottom so that our units will cancel. 27 times two divided by three is 18. So we'll need 18 pedals. Having this balanced equation is really handy. A balanced chemical equation tells you what amounts of reactants to mix and what amounts of products to expect. Now, when you need to cut the recipe or double it or do some kind of math with the equation, you're doing something called stoichiometry. Stoichio means element and metri means measure. So next time you bake a half batch of cookies and you don't want anyone to know, just tell them you're doing stoichiometry and they'll probably run away. It's really just calculations of quantities and chemical reactions, and it sounds scarier than it really is. When you read a chemical equation like this one, you can read it in terms of the number of atoms, number of molecules, moles, mass, or volume. Let's try interpreting this equation in each of those ways. In terms of atoms, two nitrogen atoms and six hydrogen atoms react to yield two nitrogen atoms and six hydrogen atoms. Not that exciting. When you read the equation in terms of atoms, it's easy to see that the number and types of atoms are not changed. They're conserved. Now in terms of molecules. One nitrogen molecule and three hydrogen molecules react to make two ammonia molecules. This ratio of molecules will always stay the same for this reaction, but the total numbers are not conserved. Now moles. One mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen react to make two moles of ammonia. The coefficients of the balanced equation tell you how many moles of each substance there are, but again, moles are not conserved. Now let's try mass. 28 grams of nitrogen gas and 6 grams of hydrogen gas react to yield 34 grams of ammonia gas. I got those numbers from the periodic table. If you add 28 and 6, you get 34, which means the mass was conserved, 34 in the beginning and 34 at the end. No matter was created or destroyed. Let's try volume. A mole of any gas at STP will have 22.4 liters per mole, so we can read this in terms of volume at STP. 22.4 liters of nitrogen gas and 67.2 liters of hydrogen gas yield 44.8 liters of ammonia gas. Volume is not conserved. In every reaction, mass and atoms are conserved. They're the same on both sides of the equation. Because chemical reactions just rearrange the atoms, the number and mass should always be the same before and after the equation. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.